Welcome to Sunday of the Course. Uh, thank you so much for the birthday wishes, uh, both yesterday and um, in the past couple of days. It's been a busy birthday weekend. I've kind of deferred my birthday because I had weddings on Friday and then I had one yesterday. Um, I don't have a wedding today, but I, ha I do have a few meetings and an engagement shoot, so no days off forever. Uh, tomorrow we're going to Las Vegas though, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and today we'll be giving you an overview kind of of my typical wedding day timeline. Uh, and then over the next few days while we're in Las Vegas, I'm actually going to be going through the specific parts of the day. So uh, getting ready coverage, followed by ceremony, followed by cocktail hour, followed by photo session, couples photos, um, nighttime photos, reception photos, all of that is going to be broken out over the next little bit, so it's very easy to kind of digest. And if you're if you're specifically struggling with maybe like family photos that you just really feel uncomfortable doing them, there's going to be a video dedicated to that. And then eventually a posing video with couples and all kinds of things coming. Today, um, I basically just have kind of my wedding day timeline here. And um, this was what Friday's wedding was. This is what uh, yesterday's wedding was. And this is what my next two Friday, Saturday, Sunday weddings uh, this coming week actually are as well. And I don't know how it's um, become so standard, I guess, for me. And I, I do want to preface this with that this is a very kind of traditional, I would say, North American, non-religious for the most part, ceremony. That my couples rarely, if ever, go to churches. They are usually kind of all at the same venue. So I arrive for some getting ready photos either at a nearby hotel or I actually do the getting ready photos on site. A lot of the venues here have kind of a bridal suite that is big enough to accommodate a wedding party and family. And I really I really have spent the last years of my life curating uh, my venues, the venues that I work with to specifically kind of support this style of day. I think it's the most stress-free, the easiest for me to come in and do the best photography possible. As well as I also really do target the venues that are photographically nice. Um, and that doesn't mean necessarily that they're like the most beautiful looking venues, but they're the easiest venues I think to shoot, which um, you've probably seen some of the on-camera videos, that a few of the venues that I shoot have like this beautiful kind of like tent that makes all the light perfect during the ceremony, or you're in like a glass, a glass box. Uh, that one's really nice as well. Um, the most challenging ceremony location is actually the one that I shot on Friday, which is called the Hacienda. And it's a very, very beautiful venue, but it's incredibly difficult to photograph. So um, you really have to put extra effort into creating amazing images there to at least begin to showcase the property. I'd say that you get like maybe 70% of the way to what it actually feels like in the day. So if you're there for the wedding day, the image is probably bringing you closer to 100% of the memory of it. But if you've never been there and you just see images, it's um, it, it doesn't quite do it justice. So, so maybe that's a helpful tip that calms you down a little bit if you are shooting an amazing venue and you're like, wow, my photos from it just aren't as good as they should have been. Um, that's a common thing that I deal with specifically at that venue. So maybe advice from that, target the venues that you do your best work in that connect the best with your style. If you're dark and moody, maybe you want those dark and moody venues. If you want bright and airy and happy, um, those are the venues that I tend to go for um, and gravitate towards. So when I'm at these venues, this is what my day typically looks like. At 2 p.m., we are getting ready. Um, I would say that this is kind of a sliding scale of things that traditionally I'm shooting an eight-hour day. All of my packages, um, my main packages that I sell are traditionally eight hours. They can add more if they want, but if they are at one of the venues that I typically shoot at, um, eight hours is usually good enough. I found that when I was doing 10-hour days that I would just end up arriving to the getting ready photo session like two hours earlier than I actually should. And I would rather show up and just begin to be efficient and like really pull my weight as a photographer the entire way through in those eight hours rather than kind of scattering that eight hours of work out over like a 16 hour day or something like that. I know sometimes with um, venues and with ceremony times and locations and if there's lots of driving, it really does kind of put a, a little bit of a challenge to this plan. But this is kind of the elements that I'm usually dealing with here. Um, so hopefully you can get a little bit of an overview from this and then over the next days we're gonna break it out. Um, so 2 p.m. is getting ready. I arrive about one hour before the bride gets her dress on and in this circumstance in the past couple of weeks I've been um, getting ready at the same spot that they are actually having the ceremony. So I arrive at 2 p.m. The first thing that I do is I get all the details, I hang the dress up, I start doing photos of the shoes and the jewelry, and I try to stay as close to kind of the girls' uh, getting ready room as possible so that they can see me doing all of these things. So there's a little bit of a warm up period, I think, that if I just came in and I was like, hi, I'm Taylor, I'm the photographer, and just like started taking candid photos of them, it's like, one, if you have the right crowd, they could like totally be into that, and that could be like, the, the greatest way to enter a room. The way I like to do it, I guess maybe this goes back to kind of my introverted nature, and I feel like it's a more 
it's a more sure bet is to, um, you can also just kind of read the room as you go in, but I think just to do photos kind of around the getting ready area and then kind of move into doing candids uh, very slowly and then like back to doing some photos of the shoes and then maybe some like hair and makeup. And I'm usually focusing on the bride first because she's typically the only one that I really have any sort of relationship with. So if she's in the chair getting her like hair finished or makeup finished or whatever, I am focusing on her and then um, kind of slowly introducing more photos of the rest of the girls of the family that's around. Depending on the day, I usually do that for about maybe 15, 20 minutes. And then if the ceremony is on site or if the reception's on site, I go and I grab some quick detail shots of everything that's set up. These are kind of my safety shots just in case uh, everything just kind of like runs late and we have no time to actually get into the room before all the guests actually get into the room so I can at least get a few detail shots. Um, this is incredibly important if you're submitting for magazines or if you want to get on wedding blogs uh, to get as many detail shots as you possibly can. These are the safe shots um, later after, usually during the ceremony, they're lighting the candles in the reception room. So I have my second photographer get in there while we're doing family photos to kind of do as much coverage as they possibly can. Again, all weddings are incredibly different. So sometimes I'm sending my photographer or my second photographer in their car to go to the reception and that eats up time. Obviously this is kind of just a, a typical, I guess like guideline of my wedding days at least. So after I have a few photos of all the details, uh, candidates of if the girls are wearing robes or whatever, we usually do kind of one stage shot, one little cheers, mimosas, whatever they have going on. And then the bride gets her dress on, I'm a dude, so I leave the room. Um, I wait outside, I ask the girls to basically like either zip like three quarters of the way or um, if it's a, if it's a corset back or whatever, that takes a long time. So like as soon as the bride's comfortable, just like somebody just push open the door and I'll come in and start grabbing a few getting ready photos. At this point, depending on if we're running ahead of schedule or if we're behind schedule, I'll do a few photos maybe just with the bride. Typically I wait for the photo session to actually do all the photos with the girls and um, the bridal party. So at this point, I usually have maybe 10 minutes, do a few photos just with the bride and then get to the ceremony. I guess the one, the one other complication I suppose to this is if they are doing a first look, um, this timeline kind of gets a little bit inverted that I would probably arrive at something like 1 p.m. Uh, we'd have a first look at two and then at three they would be kind of finished photos and they would go back and hide um, as guests start to arrive for the ceremony and then I would go out and I would start doing some details of that and then candidates as guests would start to arrive. So in this specific case that I've kind of been dealing with uh, for the past couple weeks, Going into the ceremony, um, I'm usually there as fast as I possibly can be um, before. I, I like to be there. If I am if I can be at the ceremony a half hour before, that's great. Specifically for doing photo video coverage um, or like actual proper video coverage where I need to set up. Uh, I need to get like a line out of the board to actually get audio and we have to test that. And um, The more time that I can have, the better. So to have that half hour to troubleshoot any of those problems is awesome. If I'm just there to do only photography, it's just a time to just get as many candidates as I can. I like to find as many pockets of time over the day to make sure that I get a lot of candidates. So if the ceremony is in really good light, I'm really gonna capitalize on that time and I'm gonna spend a lot more effort getting great candidates of everyone. If I know that maybe we're gonna be going to a less favorable location, for the reception or for cocktail hour. Um, if I know that like it's a it's an overcast day and it's beautiful outside other than that, so everyone's gonna be doing cocktails outside and the ceremonies in kind of like a darker, weirdly lit place, I'll do a few candidates of people and then I will know that I really need to get um, either myself and specifically my second photographer usually in this case, to hang out and get to get as many candidates and photographs of people as possible once they're in the good light. I think that's maybe one of my overall overarching principles is that just take as many photos in good light as you possibly can and if it's not good light either find a way to alter it um, or go somewhere else or just um, spend a little less time doing pictures at that time and spend more time and more effort. You'll, you see how fast I shoot whenever we're in good light that I, I really shoot lots and lots and lots of frames and that's because it's good light and I know that I want that exact like decisive like the, the best moment possible from each of those settings because I know that that best photo is going to be better than like spending 20 minutes trying to make something from bad light. During the ceremony, we'll go into more detail with this um, in the actual ceremony video. I really do just kind of like hide as much as I possibly can. I never want to be the center of attention. I am just kind of like in either the wings or I'll come up the aisle to like where the people usually stop. So if we're in a place that has lots of chairs, I'll come up to whatever kind of a reasonable um, distance is. I'm not going to be like 10 feet away from the bride and groom doing photos. I know that there are some people that that's totally comfortable for them and they get amazing, amazing shots um, getting that close of access. For me, it's just not something that I've kind of built my brand on. And for the most part, when people are giving referrals, they are giving referrals based on the fact that the experience uh, was as great as it possibly could have been and that they didn't even notice me that I was a fly in the wall or whatever um, cliche terminology you want to use. 
And the one exception to that is when they're walking up the aisle, I'm usually at the front here so I can get the faces of everyone and turn and get a shot of the groom's reaction. Other than that, I am just somewhere off in kind of the background so that none of the guests can see me. They can hear me because I shoot a DSLR a little bit, uh, but I don't think the, the shutter noise, you also have quiet shutter mode that does alleviate a little bit of, uh, of the noise, the echo, but for the most part, I also really do aim to shoot a lot that if they're if they're saying their vows, I'm not taking a lot of pictures um, to take pictures kind of over top of them talking, or if I am taking pictures during their vows, usually it's well, uh, whoever's officiating is actually like saying words in the microphone to get them to repeat the words. If it's just them actually talking back and forth, I'm not like snapping away getting as many photos as I can because I find that incredibly distracting. I will be taking a lot of fr frames when I, like anyone claps, like after the first kiss, once everybody um, starts getting really loud, that's when I start to, um, I don't know, like get a little bit more excited on the trigger. Um, and that also is that I feel like when there's that type of energy, there's way more emotion going on that when I start taking pictures in that situation specifically, it's like the bride and groom are doing something, like all the groomsmen are doing stuff, the bridesmaids are doing stuff, the parents are happy. Um, everybody is just like in a moment. And I think that like the more you can get within those moments as quickly as possible uh, are kind of the better photos from the day. After the ceremony, they come down the aisle, snap a few photos, and then typically I'm leading them to wherever the family photos are gonna happen. I structure my day so that as soon as they leave the ceremony, we'll kind of like, they can have a little bit of time for themselves. There's always a room or something that they can actually just hang out in and um, just like have even like three minutes of alone time uh, is really, really appreciated. That's something else that I really focus on that I make sure that my couples know that they should have a few minutes just separated um, from everybody else, whether they're just the two of them hanging out in the bridal suite or um, before they get introduced that they just take like 10 minutes and just sit down and like have a drink together or whatever. That is one of the more memorable times I think of the wedding day. So I make sure that all my couples have at least that time in the schedule. I'm not running a photo session like right up until the second they're about to get introduced. Um, I think that the experience is a lot better when there is some time that maybe we do a lot, we're like pretty busy for a little bit, but I want them to actually have time to enjoy their day. And for family photos, we typically have a list of everything that the bride and groom want, and we just start with whoever is the most there. So if the bride's family, um, or if there's two brides, if whoever's family is there the most, uh, we just begin with them and just try to get as many photos as we possibly can done as fast as possible. It's nice at this point to have somebody that can actually read from the list that knows who people are. So if like somebody's trying to escape that they can be like, no, you're in the next photo and chase them down, bring them back, super, super helpful. After this, this usually takes 15, 20 minutes. I get the wedding party all together and we do about 15, 20 minutes with the wedding party as well on site, just kind of wandering around, finding whatever we can find. And then the next 20 minutes is all just for the couple. And within kind of those 20 minute blocks, so like 20 minutes family session, 20 minutes wedding party, 20 minutes with the bride and groom, I am 100% happy with that amount of time. I know that I'm probably going to be bringing the bride and groom out for um, a sunset session or a nighttime session or something like that after. So even if I'm like, 90% happy with the photos during that time. During that time, I know that I can get a few more in a little bit. When everyone sits down for dinner, I would say that this is kind of the most low impact time uh, of photography. And basically I'm just around, uh, during intros, I'll be grabbing as many candidates as I can of everybody, as well as the people actually coming in. I find it's a good time that everybody's pretty excited. Once everyone sits down, I myself, or I get Tim usually, cause he has the super wide on at this point, uh, to get like a shot of the head table. So uh, I like to have like one shot before all the, the servers come in with wine service. And that is like a very, very tight moment that usually only exists for like three seconds. And then after that, everything, like people start leaving the table and whatnot. So I like to do my best to get like that exact shot. Um, and I think that's an important one to have. After this, speeches start to happen. We just take pictures of speeches. That's pretty simple. Sometimes an off camera light, depending on lighting, sometimes an on camera light, sometimes no light whatsoever. During dinner, I'll steal them for a few minutes. Um, in between courses, just talk with the coordinator, figure out what kind of makes the most sense. A um, few sunset photos, a few nighttime photos, a few blue hour photos, whatever you're feeling on the day, whatever kind of best suits the venue and the couples, the, what they actually want from their wedding day. And then after dinner, we just run into uh, first dances. So in Canada specifically, we have three dances usually, mother, son, uh, father, daughter, and then the last dance is the bride and groom. And after that, the dance floor begins. I like to stick around about five, 10 songs into dancing. After that, I feel like everything is a little bit repetitive. So I have no problems just kind of like going in that hour before uh, just to get that kind of the end of the getting ready photos and then leaving about 10 songs into dancing. If they're doing a bouquet toss or a garter or something, I rarely ever have garters anymore, but if they're doing a bouquet toss, uh, usually I'll stick around and I'll just ask the DJ like, hey, we're gonna be here till like 10, 15. Uh, do you mind if we do like the bouquet toss at 10, 15 before we leave? And as long as you give them a little bit of lead time, if you show up and you're like, hey, by the way, we're leaving in two minutes, can you just like run the bouquet toss like right now? They're gonna be a little bit angry at you, but if like during the first song of like when 
the dance party breaks out, if you can be like, hey, we got like a half hour here before we have to head out. Do you mind um, kind of like leading your way to do a bouquet toss before we leave? That way the most guests are here and also um, they can have that documented. And most of the time they understand. Sometimes, I don't know, some people are jerks. So that is kind of my high level timeline uh, run through. I guess one thing that I didn't really talk about was grooms getting ready coverage. And usually while I'm with the bride, uh, my second photographer is with the groom. If that isn't a circumstance that exists on that day, um, I will usually just do the grooms getting ready like just when they arrive for the ceremony, if it just logistically doesn't work out, if they're getting ready far away, if they're getting ready on site, then I just kind of bounce between the two rooms. Usually grooms getting ready is a lot easier to do um, and only takes a few minutes. Whereas the bride getting ready, there's there's a lot more of an arc, I guess that goes along with that, um, as well as a lot more production. And it's, I think more of an event. Um, and if you have a groom, the groom, I don't know, like it's nice to hang out, but I don't know, there's a, there's a, a limit to how many images can be captured in there before it's either just awkward or kind of just redundant. All right, so I am going to go do my meetings, go do my engagement shoot, and then tomorrow morning, bright and early, get on an airplane to Las Vegas. Thanks for watching this course, and I'll see you tomorrow. Actually, I need this.